This episode is brought to you by Fond Recollections. Cherish the fond memories of your loved ones with their interactive living obituary. He worked so hard to ensure we had a great life, but now he's gone. We miss him so much. One day our granddaughter won't remember him or how wonderful he was. Fond Recollections offers us a chance to remember him when he was young and full of life. With Fond Recollections memorial plaques and website, we can upload all our photos and videos of him. Visit FondRecollection.com today and cherish the happy memories of your loved ones. Chapter 5. All's Fair in Love, War, and Wedding Planning. That's right, girl. Soap it up! Judy cried, squeezing out a sponge full of sudsy water. It was the day of the sexy car wash so that the girls could raise enough money to get Judy's dream dress for her wedding. The ladies used the parking lot behind the Blue Miss Gentlemen's Club for the car wash and it was full of cars lined up to get washed by the sexy girls in the bikini tops and short shorts. Maria and Hannah Lee were both wearing matching pink halter neck bikini tops with white shorts so tiny that they left nothing to the imagination. They were hamming it up for the men deliberately washing one of the cars seductively and then hosing each other down. Judy thought the guy sitting in the car was about to have an aneurysm due to the excitement. Holly had chosen to wear a stringy red bikini top with matching tight football shorts showing all her curves. Most people thought Holly had plastic surgery in the past to enhance her body, but she was just born with curves. She was standing outside the parking lot with a giant poster that directed potential clients to the girls car wash. Judy suspected that the number of clients that they had waiting in line had little to do with her poster, but a lot to do with Holly jumping around in that bikini, luring potential customers into the parking lot. The club owner, Tim Meadows, strutted over to the girls wearing his trademark cowboy hat and a silk shirt, unbuttoned practically to show his mangled chest hairs. He had a cigar dangling from his mouth and had slicked back his hair with a lot of gel that was running down his forehead on this hot summer's afternoon. Damn, girls. All you ladies are swollen around your colons. He whooped, eyes trailing over the girls as they were bending down to wash a car. I'm talking ass for days. He smacked his lips. I just want to say, ladies, we're always looking for new talent at the Blue Miss Gentlemen's Club. Please don't be scared to ask for some guidance and get into the money. Ignore him, muttered Maria under her breath, and the girls pretended they didn't hear him. But Tim doesn't give up that easy. He sashayed his way over to Judy as he was informed by his nephew that the car wash was to raise money for her wedding dress. He decided that Judy was the go-to person who would help him convince her girls to come work for him at, after the car wash. Miss Judy, Miss Judy, how are you this fine afternoon, princess? He asked, standing so close to her that she could smell the cigar smoke on his breath. You sure are a beautiful woman. He leered. Are you positive you want to get married? Shit, you're so young, so tender. Judy smirked. We're all doing just fine, thanks. Oh, thank you for letting us use the club parking lot for my fundraiser. That's very nice of you. Shit, anything for my nephew's friend. He smiled, showing his nicotine-stained teeth. Besides, the Blue Miss hasn't seen a turnout this big since the great hoedown extravaganza of 2010. He said wistfully. Snapping back to reality, he directed his attention back to Judy and asked, So how much have you ladies made yet for the wedding? He let his gaze roam openly towards the cleavage of the young woman, bent over and working in front of him. Should I tell you what? Whatever you raise today, I will match it. But only if you will introduce me to the young women working here today. He sighed. <sighs> I need some new girls to excite my regular customers. The Blue Mist needs some girls to make it rain. My girls have no interest in working your deceased infested strip club, Judy said indignantly. We are legitimate working women. First of all, the Blue Miss is a gentleman's club, not a strip club. Gentle women loving men. And I am proud to say that all my girls are now disease free. Secondly, wait, hold on. Shit, why are you deciding for your girls? They are grown ass, full figured, nice looking women. Let them decide. Just introduce me. Hell, I already offered to match the money you'll raise today, so help me out. He looked at her expectantly, 
smiling his mischievous smile. Fine, Judy said, still smirking. Since you've been nice enough to let us use your parking lot to raise the money, I'll introduce you to two of my girls. Who do you want to meet? Tim pointed at Hannah Lee and Holly. Judy called them over and made the necessary introductions. Walk with me, ladies, Tim said, and they walked off together. Judy noted amusedly that he made sure the girls were walking ahead of him so he was in full view of their assets. A few hours later, everyone had gathered in one place as the car wash fundraiser came to an end. It had been a fun and successful day, but it was now time to see how much money they had raised. Judy counted all the money they made that day and couldn't believe her eyes. Ladies, we've raised $3,000 from the car wash today. She cheered and the girls whooped and clapped in excitement. What's more, the club owner has agreed to match the amount of money we raised today, so now we have a total of $6,000. Judy couldn't believe it. She was feeling quite emotional. She would finally be able to afford a nice dress for her wedding. Wait, girl, Maria called out. This ain't it. <laughs> she laughed. Yes, Holly cried. We raised 2000 more dollars at the side of the building. Judy said dumbfounded. How on earth did you make that much money on the side? Well, we held a twerkathon in your honor, Maria grinned. Shit, in two hours we were able to raise as much money as the car wash. Well, numbers don't lie, Judy said excitedly. Our total is now $5,000 raised. Mr. Manager, you need to match that. I'm a man of my word, Miss Judy. You will have $10,000 for your wedding dress. Tim declared graciously. Judy and her friends hooted in excitement, high-fiving each other. Holly and Hannah started doing their victory dance, which looked a lot like twerking. Judy couldn't believe that the car wash and the twerk contest managed to raise $10,000 for her big day. The day was done and everyone was tired but happy. However, Judy couldn't yet relax as she still had to go to the botanical gardens to get her venue sorted for the wedding. Teresa was busy with some wedding planning of her own. She had called up her friend Darlene Williams to find out who was the hottest DJ she could snag for her wedding. And she had recommended DJ Joe Crazy. DJ Joe Crazy was the hottest DJ in town now and Teresa was skeptical if she would be able to book him for her wedding, but Darlene had assured her it could be done. The DJ and her used to date before he cheated on her with one of the STD riddled strippers from the Blue Myth Club, and now he wanted to get back with her. So her friend was sure she could convince him to do the wedding. Teresa had agreed to let Darlene give her number to the DJ and assured her that money was not a factor, just to make it happen. Within the hour, DJ Joe Crazy was on the phone with Teresa negotiating his prices. Hey, is this Teresa? He asked. Yes, Teresa replied. Teresa, this is DJ Joe Crazy. Uh, my ex-girlfriend, soon to be new boo, told me to call you about DJing at your wedding. Yes, is that possible? Teresa asked eagerly. Money's not an obstacle. I just want you to keep the party pumping as if the wedding was going to be televised. So normally I don't do weddings, especially since my mixtapes are blowing up on YouTube and iTunes right now. He told her matter-of-factly. I'm a superstar turntablist, you know. He said confidently. But since you and my baby are cool, I'll do it for you for 5000 plus free food at the wedding. DJ Joe Crazy doesn't drink when he's on the turntables. Plus, I also need my own designated parking space at the venue. I can make sure all your requests are granted, Mr. Turntablist. Teresa assured him. I'm having Popeye's Chicken cater the wedding. And there's a ton of parking space at the Bayville Park where my wedding will take place. Teresa could hear DJ Joe Crazy laughing his ass off in the background. What's so damn funny? She demanded to know. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just say you're getting your wedding catered by Popeye's Chicken? And that the venue was at a public park? The DJ guffawed. You know that Popeye's Chicken has never had spicy chicken, right? <laughs> he was doubling over with laughter, hardly being able to get his words out. Damn, aren't you my booze educated friend? Shit, you can do a little better with the food at least. I know people who work at Popeye's Chicken who never eat from there. Spicy chicken or not. DJ Joe Chortle. Teresa rolled her eyes, upset at how nobody takes her vision seriously. Yes, I graduated college with your boo. And what's wrong with eating Popeye's motherfucking chicken with loved ones at a wedding? Also, if they don't have any spicy chicken, I'll buy some damn hot sauce. 
Now, are you going to DJ my wedding or not? She snapped. Yes, I will DJ your wedding and I promise that I can get the party popping all night. But please remember, I don't do refunds and I need a deposit. Teresa made the final negotiations with him and locked in the date. Now with the hottest DJ in town booked for her big day, Teresa could finally focus on the one thing she had been fixated on for her wedding ever since she was a kid. Her one-of-a-kind, custom-made peach wedding dress that was lying in wait for her at Madame Ingrid's bridal gallery. Meanwhile, Judy and her friends had reached the Botanical Gardens reception hall where she wants to hold her wedding and they were awestruck by their beautiful surroundings. The Botanical Gardens were a beautiful place to hold a wedding. Romantic with beautiful flowers and glittering lights, they were perfect for any bride fantasizing about being a princess and living out their fairy tale wedding. Judy, however, was thinking less about fairy tales and more about the wedding challenge. She knew this place would be worthy for the show the moment she laid eyes on it, and now she knew she just had to book it for her big day. Judy and her friends walked into the dining hall, making heads turn in their short sundresses and high heels. As they walked inside, they were inspecting the area with the Botanical Gardens event manager, Tiffany Polanco. How many people can we sit here at one time? Judy asked. I plan on having a lot of people at my wedding. This hall can seat 150 people comfortably and still have room for the complimentary house band. The manager replied. Judy's eyes lit up. Now, just to be clear, when you say complimentary, you mean free, right? Holly asked. Why, yes, manager replied. The band is included in the fee of the venue. What kind of music does the complimentary band play? Hannah Lee asked. They play jazz, rock, R&B, adult contemporary, and even hip hop, just to name a few genres of music in their arsenal, replied Tiffany. Well, you had me at jazz and R&B, Judy smiled. I want my wedding to be classy. All the other ladies agreed with her. What else is included in the venue fee? Judy wanted to know. The venue will cost you 5000 which includes the band, flower arrangements, your choice of lighting, and table centerpieces. Tiffany recounted all the perks. Judy was ecstatic. This is just what she wanted. She beckoned her wedding party away from the manager to discuss their options. Shit, we can't beat that price. This place is offering a lot for just 5000 Maria said. But that's half the money we have, and I still need to get my wedding dress. Judy mused. Well, just say the word and we can have another twerkathon in no time. Hannah Lee said. Judy laughed. <laughs> no, that won't be necessary. You guys are right. This is a great price. Judy calls the manager over and tells her she agreed to the price. After signing the paperwork, the venue is locked in for Judy's wedding date. Excited that all her bases were now covered, Judy is ecstatic that she finally gets to focus on her dream dress. She has her appointment at Madame Ingrid's coming up, and she couldn't wait to finally buy the dress of her dreams. Later that night, Judy called her sister to share the day's events to ask her a serious question. Teresa answered the phone call quickly. Hello? She said. How was your day, girl? It was great, answered Judy. We got enough money to book the wedding venue after the fundraiser, and it's going to be held at the Botanical Garden. She shouted. That's a beautiful venue. Teresa replied. I know, right? But I have a question to ask you about a wedding guest. Judy spoke softly. Don't say what I think you're about to say, warned Teresa. Do you think I should invite Daddy to my wedding? She asked. Not no, but hell no. Plus, that's not my daddy. To me, his name is Billy Ray Rose, yelled her sister. Do you remember the last time we saw his drunk ass? Teresa reminded her. Yes, I do, but people change this, can they? Judy asked hopefully. Not his ass. Once a drunken deadbeat, always a drunken deadbeat, Teresa stated. Since you seem to have a selective memory, let me remind you of his last visit to see his daughters. Teresa said convincingly. Daddy showed up to the house, banging on the door at seven o'clock in the morning, on the weekend, drunk. He's yelling at the top of his lungs to let him see his babies. The entire neighborhood started turning on the house lights because of the loud commotion. She explained. I know, he was lucky that Robin didn't kick his ass that morning. Judy remembered. You're right. 
but he did open the door in his underwear. Mad as hell, Teresa mentioned. I remember Robin yelling. What the fuck do you want, Billy Ray? And he goes like, I want to see my daughters, Robin. I don't want no trouble. Teresa snortled. By this time, Mommy came to the door pissed off. Judy interjected. Billy Ray, get the fuck off my porch. She came yelling. Those girls haven't seen you in years, and now you want to see them drunk at 7 o'clock in the damn morning? Judy remembered how Jennifer Davis, their mother, had questioned Billy Ray. Robin had interceded, saying, Hold up, baby. I got a shit under control. But her mother wanted to handle the issue herself. She said, No, I got this shit handled. I'll be damned if this deadbeat piece of shit is going to show up after all these years unannounced. Jennifer had raged. Billy Ray had tried to be slick, saying, Is this a thanks I get for making you an independent woman? Then trying to take the credit for her accomplishment, he had the nerve to say, Hell, if I didn't leave you years ago, you wouldn't have ever met Robin or have this beautiful home. Jennifer, more angered than ever, had replied, What the fuck do you mean by that shit, Billy Ray? Please, get the fuck off our property before Robin kicks your ass back to whatever shithole you are living in these days. Robin had then intervened, saying, That's right, motherfucker. You had your chance, and you fucked it up. Now get off my fucking property, bitch. Billy Ray finally staggered off, bowing to both of them, and walked away. Now, girl, why the hell would you want him at your wedding? Questioned Teresa. You are right. Plus, it wouldn't be fair to Robin. He was the one that raised us, and he might kick daddy's ass. I mean, Billy Ray's ass on sight. Judy laughed. Okay, this issue is settled, and I'll talk to you later, girl, replied Teresa. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. If you had fun or picked up anything from this episode, please assist us by hitting the like, subscribe, and notification buttons. You can also comment and share our content. These small things really help our channel and mean a lot to us. Also, special thanks to our Patreon supporters. You guys are the heartbeat of this channel, and we can't thank you enough for being so generous. If you would like to join our Patreon community, please click on the link below. You can contribute as little as $5 per month. You can get all kinds of perks. You can even buy merchandise of your favorite characters at our shop store. Click on the link provided below. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, remember you are cherished by us. So be kind and know that we consider you as family.